Mechanical advantage is a myth. Now hear me out. I got more fours with a nine to one. When you see those diagrams where you have a three to one or a five to one with a hundred kilograms on this side and it puts three or 500 kilograms on the output. Yeah, we all know that if you add friction to that, you're not gonna get those results. That's theoretical, perfect math or science. However, nobody really talks about stretch. And as I'm trying to tinker with a pulley system that I can go out side of the lab and break all sorts of things that we have planned, I need the perfect pulley system to get the most force I can get with just me or another person pulling. So that's this video, exploring how mechanical advantage really works. Now we're not gonna add multipliers to the system because that complicates the crap out of it. All we're gonna do is pull straight and a three to one, a five to one, a nine to one, and what I thought was clever, a 13 to one, until I realized it's not, spoiler alert. And then we use a dynamic rope, a static rope, and Dyneema, which is zero stretch, in order to see how much stretch affects each one. So stay tuned and watch the shit show while we have all these numbers we're gonna spray at you. If you want, you can see it in the description below. I'll lay it out nice and easy for you to read. We're just gonna to try to keep this video fast paced. Stay tuned. Our first test is a single strand of about five meters of dynamic rope. Let's see if we get the same output as I give the input. <laughs> so I got a little bit less here than what I was pulling. So now I've added two pulleys to the system, giving me a one, two, three to one. And here we have a nice SMC three inch pulley and over there kind of a crappy one inch pulley. And this gives us three times more dynamic rope in the system or about 15 meters. Hmm. That's not 3.3. This should be 3.3 if it was a true three to one. Now this isn't the best pulley on this side, but that's a pretty good one. Friction's not my problem in this case, it's stretch. Now I'm gonna add friction to the system. I took both pulleys out and we're gonna see if this three to one gives me a lot less over there. Fingers are gonna wear out. A little bit less, but not that much less. What was it before? Uh, 2.26. So friction did decrease my output from my input. So now I'm doing a five to one with five times more material than our single pull. So we got one, two, three, four, five with no pulleys to see what friction does. 1.39 input, 2.38 output. That is not five times more. It's not even two times more. <laughs> You've made it worse I made than it a worse. three to one. Uh, let's add pulleys. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna spring forward or backwards here. Hmm, <laughs> getting better, but that's not five times 0.89. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine to one with nothing but carabiners. I don't even know if it's gonna work because it's all pinched together, which is more of a demonstration on why there are rigging plates <laughs> than a demonstration of friction. <laughs> Not even getting anything, <laughs> damn it. Yeah, that's no different than the five to one result. That's because I was only getting five to one working with me the other rest were just loose let's just add all the pulleys in now five six seven eight nine to one with pulleys 5.92 not quite nine times more but it's close let's try a 13 to one yeah. i added little pulleys on the tail end of the big pulleys so now i've got 13 strands here and i've used all of my dynamic rope to do this we got five. That's less. Less than half. Well, we you got 8.89 on this last time and you got almost six last time. Really? Yep. So that did not increase the force by adding those pulleys. It decreased it. I have a theory on why that happened. I added another four passes of rope. So my nine to one to 13 to one, that's just that much more rope. It's just nothing but bungee cord I'm working with at this point. I bet if the rope was super static, it would give me more. The next test we do, we use a 10.0 semi-static rope, the kind that you would haul a bag up El Capitan or possibly 
jump off of a thousand foot cliff with? We're gonna work backwards with our static rope. We're starting with our 13 to one, since it was already reeved, with a 10.0 semi-static rope. It's interesting, I got a lot more because it's not springy on me. Not exactly 13 times 1.4. Um, this is a kilonewton more than we we got on any of the other ones. We have now downgraded or upgraded, depending on the results, to a nine to one with 10.0 to semi-static rip. Yeah! I got more force with a nine to one? With less WTF, with less input on the car. So now we have a five to one with the 10.0 semi-static rope. Dun dun dun, dun dun dun. We're getting closer. Five to one with no pulleys. <sighs> pulleys are pretty cool. Pulleys are pretty. Okay, friction's a thing. I'm not saying friction's not a thing. I'm just saying stretch sucks. Three to one with pulleys. Perfect. <laughs> hey, that's almost like a three to one. Three to one with just the carabiners, no pulleys. <sighs> oh, we got 1.72. Yeah, not bad for just carabiners. Yeah, but it's not double. So I'm pulling the static straight with no pulleys. Get it? It's straight. And I'm using a tree to one. Get it? Uh, ow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm gonna lose fingers. <laughs> yeah, this is what well, I was it's, pulling. It's exactly the same if you're <laughs> dyslexic. <laughs> Welcome to tomorrow. We now have five millimeter 12 braid Dyneema, uh, SK75, not that that matters. And I'm going to start with a 13 to one and we'll work our way down. Pretty hard to do the first thing in the morning. 1.51. So that's the highest re result we've got. That's pretty good. It's definitely not 13 times. <laughs> pretty good. And I think that's also the highest force you've inputted. So we've reduced this down to a nine to one and Bobby thinks it's gonna just be the same result, which I'm afraid he might be right. Which actually, it's less rope to deal with. More pulleys, every pulley is supposed to reduce friction, but it always there's always a little bit. You add four more pulleys in the system, you're gonna get friction. How did he die? He got <laughs> skewered by a dog. Is that higher? It's higher. It's like is a that newton higher. That's higher? With the same input. No! That's uh, getting closer to nine to one. No! Well, hot damn. Uh, that's pretty good for a five to one. If my math's correct, that's close. <laughs> Three to one. A lot less give in the system. Holy shit, static. Uh, fun fact, this has the same coefficient as Teflon, which means it's slippery. So it's made out of 100% dolphin skin. It's not, so I can say it. If it was, I couldn't say it. That'd be bad. Dolphin tears. <laughs> Dolphin tears. That's worse, man. <laughs> three to one. What's this times three? Did I get exactly 300%? You're a lot closer, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I'm no mathematician, but that was dope. That was literally exactly a three to one and our stretchy rope was not mechanical advantage is a myth if you use stretchy stuff we wouldn't disappoint three to one with no pulleys mm. Ow, that hurts really bad see what we just had all right so less than a three to one there's friction friction's a thing so now i'm gonna pull straight with the same five meters we've got the best pulleys in our system Bobby thinks you might enjoy that joke more than he did. Uh, please tell me if you like that joke. It'll help disperse all the comments of how I'm doing this wrong. Let's do the, uh, let's do the tree to one. Ouch! Oh, look at that. That's a tree to one right there. Huh, it's not 100%. I could have sworn it would have been 100%. So for this brake test, we settled on a five to one pulley because that is a lot less rope and I'm trying to go as lightweight as possible to carry this stuff whenever I travel somewhere or hike it somewhere. 
and I put the line scale three in a protective case. So if it does go flying, I don't break yet again, more line scales. And our test that we're trying to break is a 16 kilonewton climbing carabiner from Amazon. It is some of the leftovers from the video we're making about that, where we broke test 16 kilonewton carabiners that are advertised for climbing. <sighs> so I got really tired of pulling samples while Ryan filmed. <laughs> so I made him buy us a new toy. Uh, this is a uh, portable winch. Uh, this is a capstan winch that is battery powered. Um, so you uh, wrap the rope around this and as long as you're taking slack out of the system on this side, it pulls. As soon as you stop doing that, it just spins underneath the rope here. And what else did we discover it was great for? Uh, pulling samples up on the drop tower. And what are we trying to now discover what we can do with it? So we're trying to discover if um, when they say you can pull 2,000 pounds with it, if that's actually correct. Should we bring up soft elevator music so people don't have to listen to this? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, my whole van just sh shifted. <laughs> was that as good for you as it was for the tree? <laughs> it's still shaking. <laughs> this tree is shaking. Where is it? It's clearly not on here. The thing about taking stuff outside the lab is you've got a much bigger area to find stuff. <laughs> yeah, dude, I have no idea. I could look at the slow-mo. Yeah. So apparently an 81 to one, which is how I was trying to break things before, as I'm sure you can see how bad that is now, with a static rope, isn't gonna get me very far. I'm glad we did this test. This is the kind of stuff that I go through to learn how to make these videos and how to break stuff in all sorts of situations because we wanna do a lot of tests. Yes, we will do V-threads in ice, but I really need this to work first. And in that case, we can just have a snowmobile, ATVs, cars pull the tail, or five dudes pulling the tail of something I just need more input and accept the fact that the output can only be so much when I'm using ropes and pulleys. 